aftermath of World War I, discussions was initiated by medical doctors and specialists in psychiatry in Germany, regarding how to deal with the mentally handicapped at the psychiatric hospitals and institutions alike. The doctors thought that it was little that they could do for patients with severe mental and physical handicaps, they had a very poor life, in the eyes of the doctors and also some German politicians. But not only doctors, also German biologists, specialists in genetics and neurologists had similar viewpoints, persons, old or young, with severe handicaps with so-called unworthy lives, they couldn't do anything themselves and relate entirely on the help of others and a burden to society. In the center of the debate in Germany and also other European countries, was that the handicapped should be so-called set free from their unworthy lives and be treated with euthanasia, that is. They should be killed by the doctors. But the hard view on the handicapped didn't spring from nothing or that doctors had tired from their jobs with the handicapped. It sprang from the Charles Darwin studies of the 90th century with regard to survival of the fittest. That had, in the early part of the 20th century, developed into racial hygiene and eugenics with regard to the survival of the fittest. The Charles Darwin studies on animals, had been turned towards human beings and divided people into worthy races, the white race and among the white race the usable and the unusable, those who could educate, work and function in society. Or in more simple layman terms, the winners and the losers in the modern capitalist life of the Western world. This racial ideology and pseudo-scientific way of studying the human life was put into the Adolf Hitler book from 1924, the so-called Mein Kampf and was also made the official politics of the Third Reich in the Nazi period after the Hitler and then Stab takeover of Germany in 1933. That was soon turned into applied eugenics in the shape of forced sterilization of hundreds of thousands of Germans and later Austrians and from 1939 also was the ideological basis for the Action T4, or the so-called euthanasia program, the murder of the handicapped through one of Hitler's personal physicians, Dr. Karl Brandt, who also acted as his advisor in healthcare matters, a deadly and highly advanced murder program was set up as tool for the murder of the handicapped. But it wasn't only Dr. Brandt, also the personnel office of Hitler at the Reich Chancellery was used as a base for the whole planning of the project. That involved Martin Bormann, Philip Buhler and others among them medical doctors and psychiatrists that was renowned, but at the same time members of the Nazi party or sympathizers. Dr. Brandt and his associates initiated the project by establishing the so-called T4 headquarters in a large Berlin mansion, and from here the murder and selecting of handicapped that should be murdered took place. The villa was a medical technocratic and administrative place for selecting handicapped to be murdered. Some of Germany's well-known professors of psychiatry worked from here, though they didn't never see the patients they sent to their death, only their case files. Some of these doctors were, Professor Dr. Villener, Professor Dr. Pants, Professor Dr. Schneider. Six so-called euthanasia centers had been set up. It was psychiatric hospitals that was converted into a kind of killing facilities where gas chambers had been established in the bathrooms, and the medical staff and especially the doctors was hand-picked and loyal towards the euthanasia ideology and the Third Reich. By November 1939 the transports from psychiatric institutions all over Germany had started, in special grey buses from the German Postal Service. Patients were transported to these euthanasia centers and put to death in the converted bathrooms with the aid of carbon monoxide gas. The doctors regarded this as a merciful death, even though that the patients that was killed with this gas apparently suffered a dreadful agony in the last minutes of their lives. In 1940, an average of 4,000 patients was murdered each month in these centers. Their remains was cremated in newly constructed ovens at the hospitals and a so-called comforting letter was later sent to the relatives of the gassed patients, in the case they had any relatives. In the T4 headquarter in Berlin statistics, 
based on reports from the centers, was made each month with true German precision and was appreciated higher up in the echelon system of the Third Reich. But, it wasn't only patients with very severe mental and physical handicaps that was murdered with gas, also patients with schizophrenia, manic depressives and patients with other psychiatric diagnoses was admitted to the mercy death. Germans and Austrians that was deaf, blind, suffered from epilepsy or abuse of alcohol was regarded as clients to the action T4 gas chambers, and was henceforth murdered. Also so-called anti-social persons that was unemployable was diagnosed as persons with an unworthy life. But even Germans and Austrians that wasn't directly mentally ill or handicapped was killed, many children was murdered in the gas chambers or by an overdose of vernal or luminal, if the doctors at the ordinary psychiatric hospitals felt that their prognosis in life would be bad. They couldn't be soldiers and fight for Hitler and the German Reich. Old people, typically inmates of nursing homes, over 80 years, was also sent to the T4 euthanasia centers because they were old and couldn't work or be soldiers. One could believe that when World War II was ended in 1945 the euthanasia murders would stop, but it didn't, even it sounds incredibly, and that's because the whole of the German and Austrian healthcare system had been using mercy killing and euthanasia as a way of cure and kind of final treatment. That was also connected to the whole economic viewpoint on hospitals, patients and what expenses that should be accepted with regard to government expenditure. Using billions on war was alright, but using budgets resources on handicapped and others wasn't alright. And that's why also today that mercy killing, passion killing or euthanasia is a dangerous idea and should never be a love, because it is, in reality impossible to administer. In a time of economic crisis, massive cut down on the public health care sector, hospitals, euthanasia will be misused on patients that is regarded as not valuable on the labor market, especially old people will be euthanized by the doctors for economic and resource viewpoints. But also long time unemployed, people on sick pensions, homeless and groups alike. On this dramatic background, euthanasia can never be regarded as an option for a democratic and decent society. Only barbaric, inhumane and murderous regimes as Nazi Germany will use and allow euthanasia on their sick, weak and otherwise weak citizens. Euthanasia is not a human right, but a violation of human rights, 